for a week in New York history, people was like, what the fuck is going on with Red Map? God damn it. And you know, did you know it was a classic when you recorded it? Because niggas ain't know we was flying. They had to come to Lady our Gaga show. technically bit y'all shit. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> Also me. What it good be helping you what it should be. This is your boy N-O-R-E. What up, it's DJ EFN. And this is Drink Chance motherfucking Yappy Hour. Make some noise! <laughs> now when it comes to <laughs> legends, <laughs> when it comes to the word New Jersey, I think when you Google New Jersey, his face picks, picture just comes out. <laughs> when it comes to the most legendary uh, uh, MTV cribs of all times, Still to this day, people talk about it. When it comes to a person that you say a legend, when we start the show, we say we want to big up legends that got 10 years or more. We want to, and this, his name <laughs> automatically popped up first. Like, you know, it was in the top five. We waited three years to get this man here. We are so happy. We did it, we did it. We are so we happy. Made it. Oh. We made it. We made it. We are so we are so happy because in our culture, there's so many people that don't big up our culture. And I'm so proud. I'm so honored to tell you one of my friends, one of the best MCs on the planet Earth. That's big. Hands down. You know what I'm That's saying? Big, one big. of the realest people, one of my favorite people. Not only my favorite, one of my favorite MCs, but one of my favorite people, period, in life. If you don't know who the fuck I'm talking about, we talking about the one and only Reggie motherfucking <laughs> Intro for your ass right there. That's right? a motherfucking <laughs> intro right there. I need that for my uh, album. Yeah, man. I, I practice this. We cleared it. We cleared it. That's right. That's right. 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 Yo, yo, yeah. Let's make some noise. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if you know, but when we um, interview artists. We like to go, get together and we like to go through like the artist playlist and you know go through their whole. Your shit, pause, is long as fucking hell. Like. You you've been going like since the nineties? Is it nineteen ninety two? Ninety two. Serious catalog. Yes. Woo! And how so how let, let's take us take us to uh, people who uh who, who didn't have internet. Take us how how that was in the ninety two. Like for what's the album? As far mm. as uh just promotion, just mm. how we work, right. just the whole circuit. Yes. Everything. Let's well, go back. Well the well the well the early ninety era circuit mm. was communication. Mm. Straight up, we mm. had to. We only had maybe two outlets of music mm. to release our shit through, and we made our impact through in stores. Mm. And, and when you say two outlets, you talking about like magazines and radio? Yeah, like magazine, radio, right. okay. and and a couple of outlets as far as vi uh, video, Can't forget TV. Mixed tapes. Yeah, mixtapes. Right. That came along later, yeah, though, correct? Exactly. Nah, okay. nah, there was mixtapes in, in the early 90s. A little, not, yeah. in, in the early 90s, not too heavy. Right, it right. started bubbling in the, late, <laughs> in the late 90s a little bit. Yeah, but in that early era, it was all about the in-stores, baby. And if you mm. don't know what an in-store is, that mm. means we actually... They call them pop-up shops now. Yeah. 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 That's, 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 that's what the fuck it is? That's what the fuck well, it is. Turn into that. I, yeah, yeah, listen. Yeah, pop I, this is a nice little pop-up pop -up shop was for clothes and bullshit. Yeah, but they, 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 they can sell, sell cheeseburgers at a pop-up oh, shop. Yeah, so it's the same thing yeah. as a fucking... Uh, that's, that's, that's true. That yeah, is. Yeah, it's it's in-store. I, I, I say, yeah, they're trying to... They're trying to yeah, but I thought a pop-up shop is when it's unannounced and you just pop up and put the shop it's there. It's different, yeah. but it's the same. Yeah, but okay. pretty yeah. much, we, you know why we had to announce it um, back then is because we couldn't get information to people as fast. That's right. So now right. I can say, you know, Red Man is here after Black World Ordinary. Now we got a pop up shop at such right. and such, and people right. would just come. That's right. So, but it's the same thing as the in store. God damn it! I just seen you popping and I still jumped. That's right behind <laughs> your head too. <laughs> it's the same thing. Now we got a bet too. They said because they said Red might not drink, so we said, but if Red drink, because we celebrate. I don't know if you know, we're gonna if we see Red, when Red take the champagne. Or will Red take some rock if Red has one drink? Ooh. We have a bet going. Ooh. 
No pressure. You want me to just, no, no pressure? No pressure. Right? No pressure. You made me fart when you said that just now. I got nervous. No, we're the Tiger Bowl. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Okay. Um, I can't decide that right now. But okay. when y'all ready right, to yeah, do yeah. that, this is, this is this is this is my glass. I don't know why you poured that in there. Mm. But yeah, just pour, leave it there. If he decides he wants to have some, yeah, leave them both there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 we'll yeah. decide this, which one I go for. <laughs> shit. Oh shit, you lost, nigga. Yeah, but um, quickly though, the in store is when we had to actually go to the record store mm. and actually shake people's hands and yes. sell our material right, right over the desk and let people know that we out. And that was what we mostly did in the 90s. But well, that shit was fun as hell because we actually got to go to different cities, see see actually the hood come to right. this record store and, and actually see what was going down in that city before we went on stage. That's so. how me and Nori met, because you did an in-store at my store. Pop-up shop, yeah. nigga. Pop-up <laughs> shop. The pop-up so, in-store. So I'm, so I'm not going to lie. The other day, I looked at Instagram, and a tear came to my eye. That's right. You better have to repost that, too. I was like, yo, we post that. I'm coming to my head. Yo, yo, A tear came to my head. A tear came to my eye. Because, see, a lot of people, I got so many legendary stories from Branson. But one of my best, favorite <laughs> legendary stories is I pulled up to Branson one day. For those who don't know, Branson's a weed spot. The most famous weed spot in New York Woo! City at right now. And now let me just describe something to you. You could be known down the block, but if they don't know you, they're not serving you. Exactly. Right. Like, so everybody used to want to come from my hood because I had the rapper pass. Them niggas knew I ain't police. So they're not... So one day, let me move on to the story. One day, I just walk in the spot, <laughs> and Red Man is behind the thing. Like so, working the spot. Like working the yes. spot. You so, was in the trap. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I walk in, and I grab a couple of this shit, and I say something like, yo, how much is this? He's like, yo, that's 25 cents. <laughs> like, more lottie box. And I'm looking like, this is Red Man behind here, but I don't want to say yes. that. <laughs> and I did the whole transaction. <laughs> and then he's like, you know what's up, nigga? <laughs> I had never seen. Yo, by the way, listen, because I really want the people to understand, this was an exclusive weed spot. So let alone you couldn't even go in there. That's right. So in order to get behind there, you had to really be in, 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 uh -huh. in with Eddie. God bless. Rest in peace, Eddie. Um, uh, um, big up to Branson. But that was exclusive. And and you know why I liked it? You know, I like, loved your post because let me tell you how accurate you were. If you would have said Capone and Noriega, that you would have been wrong because Capone used to never go to Branson. Uh -uh, no, no, you knew, no. you yeah. knew the difference. Yeah. Let's just make some noise for his weed. Yes, yes. yes. I never seen Capone up yeah. there. Yeah. 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 People to, uh, for, for people to, because we don't even have, now we have dispensaries, right? Yeah. Dispensaries, great thing, but uh, can you describe to the people back in the 90s, because you used to, you were able to drink champagne there, the police wouldn't fuck with you in front of Branson. Mm -mm. Like, this is a legendary, but like, describe Wait, to is people. this the same dude depicted by Half Baked? Yes, like, I, I believe so. Like, I believe yes. so. I believe yes. so. Uh, Samson. Right, 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 you know, right, no, right. I want to talk to, yeah, <laughs> Samson. I want to talk to Branson. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing, get, motherfucker? Get him on blood. Boris, get him on blood. You need a blood? Uh, shit, hey, cuz, get me a backboard out of the yeah, truck. I'll you, I give you a rolling nigga. one up. Um, but, yeah, what, the, the Branson spot? Yes. Like you said, it was an exclusive spot to mm. be at. And, uh, mm. like, definitely, I'm, yo, me and Biggie definitely kicked it yes. out there plenty of times. Yeah, like, wow. Biggie used to be out there all the times. And I used to know when he was out there, cuz if I pulled up and it was, like, champagne bottles lined up, oh, yeah. yeah, he was up there. Or, or the red, the red, what was it, the red Land Cruiser? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, it was a legendary spot that, that I, I used to wonder, how in the fuck he had a spot running that I'm talking about a dispensary in the early 90s <laughs> right, 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 like right, right, like right. free right. like everyone knew you go there to get your bud and shit you and ain't getting robbed and the police ain't fucking with you none yep. of that none shit none of that's happening but for us it was like a communication spot yeah. for us to get bud yeah, it's for true. us to talk about on the record as well and shit because you know uh, the Cali niggas had that mm, fire out there. Right, like right, we, right. we wasn't hardly getting that fire like them Cali niggas. So that Branson was the closest thing we had to like a fresh Cali bud that we could but, connect. I, but the triangle back. I mean, I thought we were going. That's where I was going. Yeah, 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 exclusive. Yeah, 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 if you had the triangle bag, you was an official uh, nigga. Uh, listen, Mama, let's go right back to the triangle bag. But is correct me if I'm wrong. Was that the last good like brown weed? 
Was it, what, what was it Tostic that was in that shit? It it it, it went to Tostic. Then it, it then it went to uh then it went to uh, Green Bud too. He no, no, I know, I know, but I'm saying, but the shit that had us all stuck was that brown shit. Yeah, that brown. That brown shit had you coming from Jersey. I'm that, coming from Queens. Yeah, like none of us live close to the spot, by the way. Like it's it's, nah. it's, it's, it's at least 45 minutes. Yeah, where, where was it in New York? This was in Harlem. Okay. But he lived in Jersey. I live in Queens. Let's mm-hmm. think about that. So that's like a 45 to 50 minute commute just for weed. And I was staying in Long Island too. So I used oh, to commute shit. from Long and Island. And for the brown? For yeah. the brown weed. This is the last brown. Now, Red Man. Now, for, first of all, the brown weed, y'all, If right. you, I mean, you're not going to see it in these days and time. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Brown fucking weed is what Jamaicans usually smoke. And they, right. they got that. It's called a chalk. Right. But his brown weed had white seeds in it. It was sticky. So we used to take the green and the brown. We used to make what you call a beef and broccoli. Beef and broccoli. Ooh. Beef and broccoli. Ooh. I used yeah, to call it the Jekyll and Hyde. The Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, but did, did that weed have cocaine in it? Let's just be clear. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, y'all was smoking dirty. Y'all was smoking dirty. I'm going to be honest. Because you know what? Uh, <laughs> it was some certain nah, days. that's some shit you was putting in there. <laughs> listen, no, don't try to play that on purpose. Don't try to play that on purpose. No, you know why? Put me on, nigga. There were certain days I was waking up. You were smoking the spankies, wasn't you? No, them quays, nigga. Hear me out. There were certain days I was waking up, and I was like, um, you started twitching? I had no weed, and like people from my hood was like, yeah, you want weed? I'm like, nah, I'll wait until Eddie br- open up shop. And I would wait. You can remember they opened at 11. Uh-huh. At 11, I still remember. <laughs> I still remember. So I would, and I was like, damn, the way I would never like want anything else, I knew there was some type, it might have been heroin. I'm not sure, but it was, <laughs> I, I was not. so addicted to that weed. Okay. Wait, but before you don't leave yes. Branson, this reminded okay. me, yes. we had Faith on the show. Oh, yes. And Faith. she said y'all dated, you were her first, like official boyfriend. Well, did he say boyfriend or, or friend? I or thought the, she said no, boyfriend. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. Me, yeah, me and Faith dated it early. She Matter said you f- was a drummer in the church? Yeah, yeah, she mm. sung in the church too. You know what's funny? Mm. No, I ain't Faith was the first woman, I never said this too. First, Faith was the first woman my mother caught us in the bed with. Oh. Word is bomb. Shane tells all that. <laughs> Word is bomb, yo. I wasn't ready. Word is bomb. I yo, wasn't ready. Yo, she was the first woman my mother caught us with. She was, my mother came in that room, she was like, get your motherfucking asses up out my goddamn room. And, yo, but that was my love, though. Right. Right. That no, was an early it. age. Yeah. That was way before And y'all was anything. both light-skinned, too. So yo, that was on, like, <laughs> that was like. <laughs> but then we went up in the game. And we, well, she we said you took her to Branson. You're the first person to take oh, her. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. That's why it reminded me of. Of course, yeah. of course. But uh, we uh, we we went up in the game, and we we always remained friends up in this mm. game because it's like Jersey. We got a code. Right. Mm. Yeah, fuck, where you uh, where you came from? Mm. You know, what what route you going in? We always gonna stick together. Mm. And we because we always felt we had to fight to get in that New York circle. Mm. Y'all motherfuckers tried to block mm. us out from mm. so long. Mm. So when we come up in the game. Mm. We stick together, man. It don't right. matter from Rod Digger mm-hmm. to Tretch. Not you already age, know yeah. Tretch mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Do It All. Larger the Underground. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We all remain friends still to this day. Wow, wow. So, so Faith, so you know, Faith is doing her thing. I saw right you with K Def the other day, that's too. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's all right. That's all right. right. So let me some more respect, I got that. Let's make some more respect. So the Month of the Man is that the Month of the Man tour, that's the first time you ever met Rep, um, uh, uh, Method Man? No. During the month of the man tour? Yo, me, yo, Mef said he met me at a crisscross party and shit. I was high. I, I need to hear about a crisscross yeah. party. I didn't hear about a random Mef in a crisscross party. Yeah, no, right no. Now. Mef said we I met to... at a crisscross party uh-huh. and shit. Uh-huh. But I was high. I don't, I don't remember that shit, though, my nigga. We, I think we did, though. Right. But when we got really connected was on the month of the man tour. Mm. When we was like, you know what? And this is Def Jam who put y'all together, actually, Hell yeah. Right? Wow, I mean, it was dope. a smart idea, too, because we was like, we, we came out with the uh, our album at around the same time, and we had the same kind of feel so it was like fuck it why don't we put these two on the road right. and see what we create and we was out there smashing shit all right then they came up with a red and meth right. uh song how high right. and it just built from there man you know all right. now we're gonna see if you're gonna take this little bit of champagne because <laughs> i got i gotta ask you this question so i listen to red man everybody hold, on, hold on wait a minute so i'm supposed to take a don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i'm supposed to take a drink right yeah you're supposed to take a drink take a sip at least all right, let me, hold on. on let me pray about this oh. <laughs> Cause I ain't taking a drink it's in a long time, man. It's champagne. It's cool. It's cool. Okay. It's champagne. Champagne. Okay. Dude, I do yeah. this for my nigga. All right, that's right. Salute. 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 You just missing how high? Now, when I hear how high, and I hear the how high too, and I hear it's Yachty 
and I hear it's young boy, DC Young Fly. No disrespect to them, but a little, it's like, that's not the franchise when I hear Ha Ha. I mean, from the horse's mouth, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Ha, 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 how did you feel? Cause I know you and Messi was working on a script uh, about it, but how disappointed or how, how do you not feel Not disappointed. It? Okay. Because I'm a, I'm a kind of dude that, uh, you know, I'm about the youth. I'm about right. the youngins uh, coming up and you know, I want Young Yachty in D.C. to feed their family. Right. Like me and Meth fed our family right. off, our, off the How High entity. It was a good thing that we can we was able to say we started that shit. Mm-hmm. Right. But uh, because of business rights and and uh, because of, you know, political. And that they're, we're, they're we're not a your part characters? Of it. Or this well, is... well, no, they're going to create their own characters okay, now. Right. Um, okay. they, they asked us to be in the movie. Like cameo and shit. Not even cameo to be oh, in the movie the, as, oh, okay. as well, oh, wow. but we, as grown men, we want to move on and own our own shit next time. Right. right. Because we don't own How High. We right. came up with the ideas for How High, right. but they own the characters and everything. Right. So we're gonna move on, and we already got a movie that we being being written right now. Hopefully, mm-hmm. we can start shooting it by the end of this year or tip of next year. And uh, and we're gonna own that, shit. and right. that's what it's about. God damn it! God damn it! Make some noise! So yo, God damn it. yo, big up to uh, yo, but big up to uh, DC Young Fly right. and Yachty, man. Like right. yo, I got on the gram and shouted them niggas out, man. Like right. you know, y'all niggas stick together, man. Y'all just make right. that shit funny, man, and, and carry Absolutely. the ball, you mm-hmm. know. At the end of the day, right? You, would, if it was your choice, would you uh, wish they changed the name? You know what I'm saying? Because like it's like uh, it's like someone else naming the album Muddy Waters, like. It's because Def Jam had owned that name. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, there's always you, movie you, remakes, yeah. so it's yeah. like a movie remake. Yeah, but this sense. is—I I, mean—I mean, I would take it personal, not personal no, like not as far either. as hating. Like I'm talking about all or being mad. I would take it personal just as far as something I don't understand. Like I—I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even like okay. um, like I said when you uh, when you already know you made the How High uh, franchise a right. classic already. Right. It's like. We either take it. Ch- First of all, right. we the mentality of going into doing the how how part two. We already said if the shit ain't gonna be funny, we not gonna do it. Mm, you right. know, we ain't gonna tamper with the first how high and trying to make a how high too funny and it, and it end up crap. Right. So the script wasn't even ready for us to say. You know what? We ready to shoot anyway. So my thing is when a when a bunch when a, another branch or brand come in without us knowing, and then start tapping into the script without us knowing, that's when we draw the line. Like, you know what, y'all go ahead and run with that anyway. Mm. Because y'all might put some things in there that we don't agree on, right. and we're not on we're not on part of the full process of building how high right. script. So y'all go ahead and run with that. We, we good. Mm. Like, we, we not mad at all. We congratulate. You know, our right. era congratulates, right? Yeah, man. We don't, like, we don't like, hate. They, they think we we're all old haters. No, we're not no, all old no, haters. Yeah. Not at all. We, we just want y'all to though. bounce the ball the correct way. Because <laughs> when the 80s niggas gave it to us, right. nigga, we... Good point. We motherfucking... We elevated that shit. You Good know what point. I'm talking about? Like, Good 90s, point. one of the most pivotal eras there is still to this day to me. You know, in my motherfucking... Yeah, that's, that's another good segue. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Who get... Did Bismarck can give you his name? No. But you you was Who, heavily... Who, Biz? No. But you was heavily with Bismarck. Yo, absolutely. Biz was from Jersey, bro. Biz, Biz was, is from Jersey? Yeah, Biz, Biz, Biz was from Jersey. Yeah, he, he was living in Jersey. He was living in Jersey okay, a long right. time. Okay. He, he almost living... ruined my childhood. I thought he was from Long Island. Oh, no, no, no. He was lit. When he... He came from Long Island at an early age. He was okay. in Jersey a but long time. But how'd y'all time. connect and what were y'all doing? Like, uh, like everybody heard Biz. And this is pre hit squad. Yeah, yeah, pre- yeah. This is way before, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo. Everybody heard yeah. Biz lived in Newark and shit. Yeah. And Biz used to have a big ass, like, like two, three floor, like condo in Newark downtown. Right. Excuse me. <clears throat> See, damn. Right. You got, you got, <laughs> you got to drink some more. No, nah, man. Fuck <laughs> that. So, so, uh, so. So, uh, yo, we, I used to go to his crib and shit, like, you know, Biz, what's good, man? Put me on, put me on, because I went to Biz first, he'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Like, Biz, put me on, put me on. And, you know, I just kept pushing and kept pushing, and, you know, we just remained friends and shit. But on my way up, he used to take me to battle. That's how I got really known in New York for doing that Queens uh, freestyle uh, at Monticello Park or something like that. That's where I Queens got known. Queens Day? At Queens Day? I don't know. It was a. It was. Mm-hmm. I was. A, I was supposed to go to Queens to battle a nigga at Monticello Park, wow. and somebody recorded it, and that shit went on the airwaves 
quickly, like Barbito show, Stretch and Barbito. So that's how I got my name in New York a little bit, but mm. Biz used to take me around Battle for Money, and I used to air motherfuckers out. Like, I used to air niggas out so bad, yeah, we, they, they tried to, they protested against me at the end of a club. Wow. It's like, man, get this nigga the fuck out of, it was bad. But wow. I used to wreck niggas in Long Island. I used to wreck niggas in New York a lot. <laughs> yo. Word up, yo, Axe Biz. Yo, Axe Biz, straight up. Now, one of my favorite videos of all time is um, I'll Be There. It's one of the greatest videos. It's hilarious. All time. I shot that in Queens. In Queens, right? All yes, right, sir. so hold on. Please, let's please. let's take, take me through that because whose idea was that video, period? That was my idea. I need you to shoot a video for me. But let's continue to do that. Yeah, continue that was my idea. Like, oh, Is that where you hit the, the girl with the bike? No, the, no girl, the girl. The girl hit the, the car. The, the, car. the girl hit the car. She she ran into the back That's of the car. That's what I'm saying. That video, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, no, I just I just wanted to be different. And I mostly all the videos I shot in the '90s was my idea. Just right. directors took the idea and built on it. So who's it who took it. the credit for that? Dave Myers? Who was that? Damn, who the fuck was that? Shit, I forgot, man. Was it Diane Martell? C come on, um, Taz, Google that. Come on, baby. The Googler. Yeah. We got the Googler. The That's Googler, the Googler. Right? But I right, describe so so the video was inside of Silver Cup Studios, I imagine, because um, I imagine you did because Silver Cup Studios is around the corner from Queensbridge. That was the uh, same place where Sop Sopranos is filmed at. Um, that I studio. Ain't know that. I ain't yeah, deep. I ain't know was that. the studio that you filmed it in? No, no, in I, I shot it right outside. Oh, no, I'm talking about because remember you you did the uh, the workout part. Oh, you know what? Are you you I, I'm not sure. I don't oh, want to okay. get a hairline. Right, cool. Come on. I'm trying to break it down. <laughs> yeah, probably, you probably right. No, you're probably, you're probably, no, I'm you're sitting probably over here. on the job. No, no I'm you. sitting over here. I always guessed that for years yeah. because, you know, what was funny was this was like right after, like, um, there was kind of like turmoil with you and Mob Deep or whatever. Yeah. And then it's crazy because at the time, I believe Cormega was kind of beefing with Mob Deep. And then you had Cormega in there. And you sent an uh, ill message to, to Queens that you ain't, I don't know if you knew what I you was doing. Knew. I kind of knew, right. but 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 what right. but it wasn't the lip. Come on, bro, you already know. Um, also, too, come on, I was living right in the projects right here in um, on um, Woodside. I was Get in Woodside projects, man. Wow, look, nigga, I was in Woodside projects to my fourth album, nigga. Get the fuck out of yeah, here, yeah, man, right there, man. I used Yo. to walk down on what's that little shopper area? Y'all got that Northern uh, Boulevard? Uh, uh, Starway, yeah, Starway. Okay, yeah. yeah, nigga. So I used to I used to walk. From Woodside down to that, in the Queensbridge on the, and, and it's a, a weed spot. It used to be a weed spot right there, right in the back of Queensbridge. One oh, door. I used oh, to go oh, in to see that nigga. Yeah, I used to go see that nigga. Yeah, Paul Brown. This nigga is a legend. Yo, man, this nigga yo. is a legend. Yo, so I was already yeah. in Queens right there, 10 minutes from my beat. Why we, why it was so called we was beefing. Mm. So I was already there. So when we, when they decided to shoot the video, I didn't come up with that location. The video mm. people came up with that location. They, they was like, it. yeah, they was like, this is a great area, and it right. just happens to be Queensbridge. Right. And but what you right. were saying though, right. I was like, you know, motherfuckers was coming to me. He was like, yo, you know, my deep in them niggas, but right. you know, m but my niggas who I was with, like twins right. and all them right. niggas, they was like, we don't give a yeah. fuck right. who around us. But he was with Cormega as well. He's we shoot, very we shooting the video. He was uh very at the time they was like it was a little toy Murray between the, the two sides. Then the uh, but I didn't know that Keith Murray too. Like, I didn't, uh, I didn't, that I shit happened Murray. Keith Murray. Murray was before that. I didn't know that though. I didn't know that turmoil oh. between Carmega yeah. and yeah. You know, you um, always you always have a, a real positive attitude. Like I I I, I just want to congratulate you for that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you know what? I remember when I uh, first went on tour with you, one of my first times. I was cuffing the mic. And no one would tell me nothing. Like, I was just in the room and people couldn't really hear me. And you was the only nigga. You came out, you was like, yo, my dude, stop covering the mic. You're covering the whole shit. You know shit? <laughs> and I was like, geez Louise, Bobby G. He's like, no, like, you know, I, I respect that. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, respect that, that man. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to say some shit like that. You must have been on the move. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was wildin'. Okay, has text me, okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> Diane Martell. Damn, Diane Martell did Diane Martell. Yeah, she's a bad one. She yes, is. She, she, is. She, she, she was. She was ill. So, okay, damn. <laughs> so you came up with this concept. You filmed it. It happens out, and uh, um, and now, did, so you say you you didn't know that, you know the, the things that's happening, right? No, I didn't. Okay. No. All right, but what did you feel like when you heard about the when Keith Murray, and and the Mob Deep thing happened at the tunnel? Um. Well, Keith Murray, well, prodigy. Well, right? I already. Uh, 
First of all, I didn't even know, I forgot how the beef even started. Was it over the skit? The um, astronomical, diabolical? It wasn't, but it over his shit? Uh, I believe Prodigy did a skit, I believe it is, um, and was like, like making fun of the, like the lyrics, like the yeah, words. they like like and uh, and uh, um well everyone thought it was going. So we gotta at. ask Keith Murray about this and he'll tell yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone thought that at the time that it was going at you and Keith Murray. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. You, you, oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, he when he said something about you talking that space space yeah space shit yeah space yeah. shit yeah. 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 yeah yeah. Yeah, I, motherfuckers thought he was talking about me. Right. I I I, don't, I, don't, I ain't. I don't know if, if that was the same thing that kind of sparked Keith Murray. I think it was something. No, I think it is. I think it is. I'm, I'm I, you know, yeah, I me, again, I'm an outsider looking in at the time. I thought that was something different, like, with them, yeah. him and Keith Murray. But at the end of the day, when I heard that he, uh, right. what happened at the tunnel, right. uh, I wasn't surprised because Keith Murray was a, a, was a loose cannon mm -hmm. at that time, and, and everybody mm -hmm. was getting it. Like, right. everybody was getting it. Like, whoever, like, said something or mentioned anything about the squad, like Keith Murray was out there running shit down. Didn't Keith have a fight with Dame Dash and Apollo? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't see it. And I just heard about it, uh -huh. about Dame getting cracked over the head or some uh, shit uh, like that. that. I don't know. God bless. God bless. God bless. We man. all here. All positivity. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But that's one thing about the 90s, though, my nigga. Yeah, like, 90s, you had to get hit we, we, over the head with yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah, like it's just it's you had automatic. To get you got to sign your contract. Smack. Or, yes, you know, something. It is, it That's is, right. It is. Because we had that communication to, 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 to slow it down. There's no DMs. Yeah, there uh, wasn't no DMs. Uh, There's no uh, Twitter. Uh, no no trolling. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, not at all. Mm. By the time it got to the grapevine saying you sorry, mm. we already didn't right. see you at your right. show and shit. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now that was real. That was real because, um, see, see right now, you can beef and you can troll and you can do all that. You might have never see this person that you're talking about. Back then, you had to talk shit right. and then be on Summerfest and then meet each other at the Gavin Convention and Impacts and all this crazy That's shit right. and, yeah, a, and a, a mixtape and, right. and, and, and mix show Power Summit. And the thing about it is, especially if you had an album out, your record label was forcing you to be in there in the, with the same exact people you was meeting right. with. So it, it forced us to be men. Not the same as people nowadays are not men. I'm just saying it forces us to be more manly. You know, mm -hmm. you, or you, confront you, the shit you're talking. Exactly. Yes, you're yes. Gonna have to deal Live with up it. to what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And usually if something was said like in the 90s that was out of pocket, it it usually had to get dealt with. It wasn't no just yeah. slick shit and, oh, right. you need to correct yourself. No, usually if a motherfucker said something about somebody in the 90s, that shit was on and popping. No beefing it out or whatever because, you know, we, we took this music shit serious, you know? Yes. No, we took that's it true. Serious. We took now, it very serious. Now, one of the things, you could probably help me out. This is pure me as a hip-hop fan. Yeah, yeah. One of the first records I ever heard DMX, he comes out and he's, this is K-Solo. <laughs> K-Solo was out five, six years. I could not understand the relation. I still to this day don't understand why it was DMX's first oh, record. Oh, oh, not get at me, dog. not that. I believe so. Yeah, he said something about <laughs> Solo on one of them. Yeah, and uh, I, I just, I couldn't even, because there was two different generational gaps. Am I woo! lying? Like, like maybe they, they're the same age. No, yeah, yeah, yeah but they definitely but, come from the same era. But what I'm saying is, like, they, I, they was locked up or something. Oh, in the same. yeah, because remember, Dmx had been around for a minute. He yeah. had deals yeah, before that. But, but, but he he wasn't on. Right, but he was in was the circuit. On. But he was in the circuit. Right. So I never understood what what happened. You know what's funny that me and my brother argue about that all the time. Me and Solo. Right. And still to this day, right. still to this day, he still like. You know that goddamn, you know DMX man, DMX, and I don't know if DMX is still saying you know that goddamn K Solo, K Solo, but you know both of them, you know they, it's family. I call DMX my cousin. Right. But the beef, what you saying is is right. Like right. it was, it was a little com a bridge, a, a little gap. In yeah. between Solo and when what? DMX came out, right. but they was talking about a beef that happened way, way <laughs> right, back, right, right, right. and it's still going like bubbling till this fresh, day. Fresh for them. They see each other and right yo, now. Yo, so like exactly, and I'm telling my big bro, because you know, big bro, a little older than me and shit. I'm like, yo, big bro. Don't nobody want to see you and DMX out here sh shaking the tail feather on some old ass beef, my nigga. You know, you want to, yo, straight up to make this, to make that, to make that situation acceptable, y'all should do a motherfucking record. Mm. Have a spell off. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it was yeah, about that. Yeah. Yes. It was about the spelling record. Like, I was the first one spelling. Yeah, yeah. Spell it, yeah. yeah. They that should have great. a spell off. Because half of these niggas in this room don't know Spellbound. Like, no, nah, no, nah, a lot of them. I'm lying. It's the older niggas in here. I'm, I'm bugging out. I just, I just was loose. Okay. I was loose. Uh, like, 90% of these niggas probably know Spellbound. All right, then. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah, yeah. that nigga over there, like, <laughs> I totally, that nigga back there, I totally too. totally forgot the crowd we was in. But, um... Uh, 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 working with LL. Uh, how was that for you? On what, the 4321? Yes. Because uh, wasn't that the cannabis yeah, it is thing the, as well? That's the cannabis. Yeah. And you was just caught in there. How did you feel when the drama unfolded? Well, shit, we were surprised because we was like, when we heard cannabis verse, we didn't take it like he was talking about LL. We with was the like, mic on the arm? Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, I mean, it sounded a little aggressive. No. Like, all right, I'll take that money. But the way uh, cannabis was going at it, because can cannabis was like hanging around us a lot at that time. Okay, right but let's describe the scene. Are everybody in the studio no, together? No, no, yeah, are you no, hearing no, the no, finished no, no, record no, no, is what okay. you're talking no, about? No, no, no. Because no, remember, we Al were, had a verse and then he changed it. Exactly. We, we, we did our verses separate. Right. right. And me and Mep did our verses together. And right. everyone came in with their verse. But when we found, and he did the track. So I got to hear the verses. So mm. when I when I when I you say heard Eric it, Sermon did the track. Yeah, Eric Sermon. For everybody did that don't know when you say yeah, E. Eric right. Sermon you produced four three two one. Absolutely. Right. Big up to E Dub and this bitch. That's right. what I mean. That's right. <laughs> Yo, E Dub, what's up, nigga? Yo, but um, bottom line is that when I heard the verse, no one uh, took it as he was trying to diss LL until LL just heard it. He was like, Nah, nah, that don't sound right. I'm not mm. feeling good about this on my record. Mm. And because I think I heard the verse that LL did before that. Yeah. I'm not sure, don't quote me and shit, mm. but I think I heard the verse and I was like, all right, Cannabis laid this verse and LL went and changed this verse and that shit was long as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, he was, and he was trying to tear Cannabis a new one. Uh. And, and the bottom line is what I was saying is that when we heard Cannabis verse, we didn't take it as he was trying to diss. And I don't think Cannabis wrote it as a diss record either. I just think as a youngin, he was just coming up and he knew he was the new Jack out of all of us. So well, he was like, fuck it, let me just get a little aggressive. We, we had L on here, yeah. L said, the, the problem was that when he said, yo, he actually told yeah. him that in person. He was like, yo, yo, I'm gonna get a mic just like that. And L was like, yo, listen, homie, you don't have to get a mic like me. Get a mic, get, get something else. And he 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 made it clear right there. And then when he put it in the rhyme, he was like, "Oh no!" Let me take that mic off your. Own. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, "Oh no!" I told you. So he took it personal, like it was a conversation. Yeah, that he was just saying, yeah. yeah. See, I didn't hear that. Yeah, so, yeah. See, now yeah, that changed yeah, the yeah. perspective yeah. of what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. Because yeah. if a nigga asked something off my arm and then mentioned it in the record later, I'm like, that nigga was trying to get fly. Yeah, he was yeah. trying to get fly. He was trying to get fly. All right, that's good shit. I learned something today. Okay, because but. but uh, Bottom line is LL wasn't having that shit. And uh Great shit. Hold that on. That shit came, he came in and destroyed niggas. Who y'all think won between that battle? Come on. From Queens. Who y'all think won between nah, that battle? The, the the cannabis record. Queens, man. Red you man. talking about records like Queens. the records that came this afterwards? This is between the battle period. Because can, didn't cannabis come back up with one? The cannabis record was ill. The, the now, cannabis first round cannabis knockout, my right? guy. When he had Mike Tyson on it. When he had Mike Tyson on I fucks with him. He's my friend. And then uh, Jack the Rapper love. was the, the LL joint afterwards. That's love, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Second round knockout is... Classic. But in the end, ultimately, who's here? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day. I respect that. So we randomly called a couple of people to ask you some questions. We're going to see if you know who this person is. Oh, shit. Redman, as a DJ, he was a DJ first. What was his favorite songs to mix and record to tape? Genre. <laughs> well, it's a, new, it's a newer thing, though. Your favorite genre. I know that's Eric Sermon. <laughs> uh, and what did he say? What's God. your favorite genre as a DJ? <laughs> to what? mix, what's your favorite genre? Oh, what's my favorite jo genre, genre to mix? To mix. Yeah. As a DJ? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Well, of course, hip-hop, but He club said it's a newer music. thing. That's what he said. Club. Like dance music? 
I mix some club, nigga. What, what are we saying when we say club? Yeah, this like house music? music? Oh. <laughs> yeah, club. Yeah, Jersey, we don't give a fuck, nigga. We want. Hey, listen. Jersey niggas, we ain't never been no suckers in no club, nigga. We, you know, the niggas be telling we don't dance, man. We don't fuck up. Nah, nigga. Jersey niggas, we dance with the hammer on us, niggas. We, we ain't them kind of niggas that be. We come in that bitch like this, because we got that, you know, we got that club and rooted isn't it. Rooted in this nigga, so yeah, we was always uh -huh. club niggas. Always. Cause that's what E must have been talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Genre, but I mean, housing. It's dances. a Newark thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Newark thing. Okay, hold on. Oh, he said it's a Newark thing. Fuck it. Here's the third question. Uh. Ask him, do you remember who co-signed him after he got turned down by Def Jam, not once but twice? But who made um, Leo's head turn around after he got told by this other rapper? That Redman was dope. Oh, shit. I'm assuming it, would, it wouldn't be him? I don't know. It sounds like a trick question to me. I mean, EP and B. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I would say and that, who too. who came up with them questions? You? No, no I, I just, I reached out. I said, did. that's some shit that only you would know. I needed, I, you, you Redman, goddamn. We got to go above who, and beyond. Damn, man. Who the fuck is he? He said, who, who? What? Would you like to get the questions again? Co sign you to Def Jam dun, dun. after Def Jam turned you down, is what he's saying. I ain't even know Def Jam turned me down twice. That hurt my heart when he said that. I wasn't, I wasn't that bad. That wasn't a question, that was a revelation. I was ready to go to sleep. That's, I, I got turned down twice. I remember the one time and shit, but twice? No, my nigga? One time, one time. No, no, wow. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Twice I got turned down? He said, an artist. He said, you was dope, and then Leo turned his head. <coughs> That's what he said. Wow. He said, artist told Leo, and then Leo turned his head. You want to hear it again? Or? Yeah, so I can kind of, <coughs> so I can feel maybe who it is. Ask him, do you remember who co-signed him after he got turned down by Def Jam? Not once, but twice. He said that real cocky, too. <laughs> <laughs> Not once, but twice. Not once, but twice. Uh, so he's not talking about himself? We counted him out? That's the only thing. I didn't ask him for the answer. I'm thinking it's him. <laughs> hey, I swore he would know. <laughs> listen, this is all new news to me. I ain't know I had to get a co-signer. I've been telling niggas for years. Yeah, I just, you know, got signed because I was dope. <laughs> <laughs> not oh, once but twice. Not once but twice, that cocky motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he said that real confident too, and it didn't roll off right in. Not once but twice. It, it was like, not once but twice in this motherfucker. Yo, if it ain't Q tip, I don't know who. Oh, it, shit. If it ain't Q tip, I don't know who else. That's who it is. That's what you know. I'm just gonna say yeah. Excuse me. Oh, that sounds amazing. Know, shit, I don't know. Is that is that who it is? I, I it might you. it might have been Q-tip. It might have been. Ask him when he got a little bit of money. What was the first car he bought? I know it's corny though, but it's not corny to us. You got a little what bit of money. What was the first car I bought? Yes. When I got a little money, what was the first car? First car I bought. Because when I was living with E, I jacked the nigga for a car <laughs> and was so using his car that. for a half a year. You took that New Jersey shit way too <laughs> Yeah, I, I needed a fucking car. Plus, the nigga that I jacked it from did something to fucking E. I, we had to handle, but, but shit. It had to be a Ford Runner Let's or a Land noise. Cruiser. Let's make some noise for the Ford Runner and a Land Cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four running Land Cruiser. Yeah. Four Land Cruiser. <laughs> do we want? Do want to show Tito's gift? To All us? right. So look. So just so you know, Red Man, we. This is the DJ. This is. We're the new. We're the new. Um. Eric B. We're the new came modern day him. Eric B. and Rock Kim. <laughs> I'm the rapper. He's the DJ. We got a show, right? Uh huh. So we never knew this shit was gonna blow up. So we got voted for. I know what is it? National. No, what is it? I know he did. National Film. Um, oh, we, we, NFTA, National Film Television Academy. We're up against Jimmy Kimmel. So we was up against shit. Jimmy Kimmel, no Ellie DeGeneres, Saturday. Um, Saturday Night yeah, Live. We're not supposed to win. So niggas didn't even want to go to the awards. Niggas like, we ain't winning this shit. And we actually won. 
with in true drink champs fashion, we sent one of our friends to pick up the award. Because in LA, and we hit. In it. LA, because yeah. we was here, and we didn't think we was going to win. We didn't think we were going to win, uh-huh. so we didn't go. So we sent our friend, and look, this is what our friend sends us back. <laughs> so he sent the, the award to us. <laughs> this is true drink champ shit right here, yeah, red man. Well, yeah. no, it's not good shit. You ain't, we ain't finished shit. So here's one part of it. <laughs> <laughs> here's the, the part that says National Film and TV Award. This wow. nigga broke our award, <laughs> red man. Red man, he here's broke <laughs> He broke <Here's> our <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. At least y'all get to share it. That goes in the middle. I mean, at least y'all can share it now and shit. Shout out to Red Man for being positive about this. Yeah, absolutely. Best talk show 2018 drink champs right there. Hey, that's that's yeah. good shit, brother. <laughs> Just crop it right here. That's good shit. Yeah, man. but we actually are uh, our first. Is, is, was this our first? We, award? The award. Like, I think it's our first. We got another award, but this is our uh, first. Uh, and where? Dominican where? Republic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, over here, y'all podcast is kicking ass. No, right? no, but listen, this is this was dope. It was dope. And two drink chance fashion. What is it? Tito, um, five seven. What is it? No, what's his, what's his Instagram? No, what's his Instagram? Yeah. Nicknamed Tito. Nickname I forgot. Tito. I keep I keep thinking about his Twitter. Yeah. Nicknamed Tito, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you for showing up and collecting our award. And also, fuck you for bringing it. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, Tito? <laughs> He dropped it going into an Uber. Yeah, and this was crazy. He had the plan of not getting too drunk, so he figured this going to Uber. So I was like, all right, Uber. You know, Uber is like, all right, cool. But you still fucked up, and you drop it going into the Uber. Oh, that's what he told you? <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't believe it. No, no, that. but there's pictures, of, and he went bar hopping. Oh, yeah. And there's pictures of the award in every bar. I'm going bar hopping he with him. He went bar hopping Saturday. with the fucking award show and all. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give me a fucking break, Tito. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> it does sound fucked up now that I hear him say come out of his mouth. Because, yeah, you, you know, the bar hopping is something I would have did, but then not, not like coming out of Red Man's mouth. I'm like, that oh, was some yeah. fucked up shit. Yeah, he should have took on, that shit home. What the fuck? <laughs> hey. I got a left field one. Hold on. We got one from left field. Hold on. Oh, Yo, so this year I started doing your fuck you red man chant at my shows, but I do fuck you Ja Rule, obviously. <laughs> but I started doing it because my message to the world is we ain't gonna have no more Ja Rule hating tw- Oh, oh, that was me? Got my bad. Sorry, I'm not that professional, but I'm trying to get my life together. That's right. Okay, hold on. Do we got to start from the beginning? Seems like it. Yo, what it is, what it is, Red, Drink Champs, Nori, EFN, was good, baby, it's the rule. Listen, Red, I got a question for your stinking ass. <laughs> Yo, so this year, I started doing your Fuck You Red Man chant at my shows, but I do Fuck You Ja Rule, obviously. But I started doing it because... My message to the world is we ain't gonna have no more Ja Rule hate in 2019 going forward. So the fuck you Ja Rule chant is for them to get it out their system. But I always admired when you used to do that shit and thought it was dope and, and the energy, you know, that the, 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 the crowd gives the crowd and it the, the feeds off. So I just wanted to ask you, what what made you want the crowd to say, fuck you, Red Man? Oh, well, shit, man. That's an easy question. My, well, he got it from me. And you know what? That's that's a very good analogy I'm about to make because you know why? Where I got it from was my mentor, Ice Cube. Like my mentor. I, heard that. I was about to say Easy E. Exactly. I was about to. I was I just close to sh- saying Easy E. Listen, because this dude is out there and I'm talking to you. We want to fuck you, Easy. No, well, no, 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 no. Ice Cube was saying, "Fuck see, you, Ice Cube." Get it but see, I got song. it from a. I got it from a historical time, man. Like when Ice Cube first came to New York doing that NWA beef. And he did a show America's at the Most Apollo. Wanted. He did America's Most Wanted did, he, with Public Enemy. He, yeah, he did. He did a show at the Apollo. It's first right. time in New York, 
And when I tell you the Apollo was ram packed, and that nigga went out there and he was like, say fuck you, Ice Cube. I was like, oh, I almost caught a heart attack. I was like, a nigga saying tell the crowd fuck him? At that age, come on, this was like like when it, it was like 91. I was like 21 and shit, 22. No, 21. And he came on stage and said, fuck you. Said, everybody say, fuck you, Ice Cube. And I literally shit a chicken right, <laughs> right there because I couldn't believe how you would get a positive energy from such a negative reaction. Uh. It was like, fuck your wife's kill me. And I just ran with that bitch from there. <laughs> and, and then Ja Rule, he know yeah. he got it from me thinking yeah. that I made that shit up. Wow. But I got to let him know I got it from Ice Cube, but it just shows the line of respect. Wow. That the MCs that we have yeah. for each other for our era and wow. for the era beyond us. That was wow. a good analogy, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> I'm even surprised at myself with that motherfucker's thing. Love, love, man. So do you ever look at do you ever look at your career and you um because a lot of people they always say that uh if Eminem was uh uh black, he would be red man. I think that that is like a great thing to say. I don't think that. I don't. No, not at all. It's, it's a good thing. I it's like a good thing. thing. Yeah, that's yeah. Eminem, Eminem is, yeah. Eminem is hard as fuck. And he looks up to you. Oh, he, absolutely. Red Numerous Red times. MCs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know Eminem was in Newark right. way long time ago. before. Outsiders, correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Young so he was always connected. He was always enthused by that Jersey, uh, right. you know, uh, Kruchemont we have as far as MCing or whatever. And uh, we just remained friends. After we did that record uh, that was for the uh, Clumps, uh, Clump soundtrack. What the fuck um, is that? The Eddie Murphy. Professor? Yeah, the, yeah, Nutty the Professor? Clump, yeah, Nutty Professor. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, we did a, a song on the uh, soundtrack, I think part two. Uh -huh. And uh, even from there, like I was going to Detroit a lot. I, I would go to his house. This is when he was, you know, living in the crib or whatever. And uh, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. early days. Yo, way early days. So yeah, his, yeah, yeah. So he Just, was doing the, the, the battle circuits and yo, all that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and we just remained friends. And uh, I always respected his craft. He respect my craft, and that was it. You know. But he yeah, ever shot for the goodness of featuring me. <laughs> the uh, Wi-Fi go out uh, in this right. <laughs> fuck, No, Buster Rhymes <laughs> no, said, "Why'd you never shoot the video for the goodness featuring him, Ooh. even though it was big in the streets and on radio, like it was a single?" Okay. This is niggas coming at you right now. Oh. This is Buster Rhymes. Come on, Buster Rhymes. <laughs> what he say? He said. Um, Ask him why he never shot the video for The Goodness featuring me, even mm. though it was big in the streets and on radio, like it was a single. Oh, you know what? I I wanted, what are you talking about? I, I wanted Busta Rhymes a part of that video. I think that was a label thing. Okay. Um, mm. With the label and Def Jam or whatever, shit, come on, Bust, no, that's my <laughs> nigga. I would, I'm the first to be like, even my niggas asked, yo, why ain't, why couldn't, I was like, shit, it, it seems like that's a label issue, a, a little bit above my pay grade. So right. I was just like, all right, I'll let them deal with it. But of course, I would have had Buster right there. Right. That's my nigga right there, he already know. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, when, you, when it comes to performance, especially hip hop, I think it's you, Red. Karis, I mean, you, uh, Meth. KRS, I'm about to, KRS. I'm about to skip to Buster. Can't even say KRS one in the woof. Oh, wait, wait. Red Meth, Buster, KRS. DMX. DMX. Oh. DMX. Oh. De La Soul. De La Soul. Y'all ain't never see a full De La Soul. Of course. I, I was on Tommy Boy, of course. Shout out to the Spit Kickers tour when they were killing it out there with that. Nigga, any of y'all seen the De La Show in mm here? -hmm. Anybody seen the De La Soul Show in mm here? -hmm. Mm. Nigga. They like R. Kelly survivors. And they're not allowed to talk to yo, people. Yo, listen, man. It's, yo, listen. I went too far? I went too far, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, don't All even right. mix that with that pot. <laughs> you know, somebody in here, you far. can't I even mix that in the so pot sorry. right now. But yeah. um, it's certain niggas that tear the fucking building down and certain niggas that, that get busy. Right. Um, I could definitely say De, uh, De La Soul, one of them niggas that tear the building down with Busta Rhymes. Mm. DMX tears the building down. And he cries on you. Yes, he cries yeah. and he tears the building uh, down. Sermons and all. Uh. Yes. See, you can't forget Cube. Cube also kills it. Cypress mm. Hill kills it. Cyp mm. Oh, Cypress Hill tears the building down. Yeah. Uh. Down. And I'm like, we just learn from niggas. We just learn off each other mm. because we still do shows. Like, we still do shows, my uh, nigga. Like, our era, we still do shows like it's the 90s. 
Right. It's still room for us, a whole lot of room. Absolutely. Because even now in the states right now too, it used to it came to a certain part where we was getting a lot of money overseas. Going to yeah. Europe, but yeah. since a lot of motherfuckers are the, the a lot of new artists is not putting on good shows, they yeah. turn right back around to yeah, 90s they want to niggas. Mo- rock the crowd. Yeah, yes, rock they, they the just want motherfuckers crowd. to be rocking. And we yo, it's we fluent now. We back on the road, man. Shit. God damn, make some noise for that, eh, bye. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> Hell yeah. Your ass would be on the road too if you wasn't here. Yeah, yeah. I, I was on. I was killing Europe for a little while. Mm-hmm. Goddamn it. No, but um, now MTV Cribs. This had to be the most legendary. Like it's the most memorabilia because I love your story. Every time I see you, I, you know, obviously I go watch interviews, and um, every time you say, "Yo, everybody wanted me to rent a crib." Like, yeah, they wanted you to. Because that's what they were doing. A lot of artists were doing that. The ladies. Hey man, come on, man. Give me a break. You go on. You see that shit on TV. That shit all neat. Right. Look like a museum right. in there and shit. Right. Like no right. one right. been touched. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. Right. Right. Nigga ain't buying that. You open the refrigerator. The food is neatly placed in that. And bitch. what season of MTV Cribs was this? It was just like I don't a even third? know. It, oh, oh. it was like going near to their last season, damn okay. near. Because okay. I wasn't a part of the first couple <clears throat> of seasons. I know that. Right. The only thing I know is is that. They expected something else. Right. right. So you didn't even tell them. No. Right. My cousin, my fat ass cousin was there. He ain't here. He was the one sleeping and on the floor. And we're about to have him on the show too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one sleeping on the floor. He know. Because, because they, we talked about it, and they was like, I was like, they, you, we want you to do MTV Cribs. Right. I was like, all right, cool. They say, yo, we we got a house that we would like to put you in. I was like, oh, word. And I had to think about that shit. My, my my brand was on the line. Another time, how many gold albums you have at this time? I had, I think I had like four. <laughs> oh my God. Four, four okay. gold albums. Yeah. But just in the midst of that decision, I had to make a, a real a real executive decision on that uh, on that answer. And I said, you know what? No, I don't want to rent a house. I want y'all to come to my house. Uh-huh. And they ain't have no idea where the fuck they was coming to. Now, where, where was this house at? This house was in Staten Island. Oh, okay, okay. And see, what happened was... Two orders in Newark. No, Damn, no, no. It, it wasn't, it, this was like a real estate project I was doing and shit. Okay. So this was like a, my mm-hmm. first little real estate shit. I was like, oh, I'm going to fix this. Do, do, do. <laughs> but I ended up staying in the bed because I had nowhere to go. So, uh... <laughs> word up. No, true story and shit. That's a very risky real estate true project. Story. Yeah, yeah. I ended up living there. I had nowhere to go. So, uh... So these motherfuckers showed up like a half hour early trying to be all cocky and shit at my door, you know, half hour early. And they they came in my shit. They was like, damn, this is where you staying at for real? I was like, yeah, this is where we shooting at for real. <laughs> and they was like, OK, let's get the cameras rolling. Let's set up. And, and, and they came in with an assumption and they left with an understanding, mm. right. with appreciation right. mm-hmm. of how an artist can be so known to the world, but appreciate staying in a spot like this to generate his brand. And still mm. to this day, I'm right in that spot. Like now, I was I got, my, that was my next question. Right, would you, yeah. Was you really, really there? Like, yeah, my nigga. Hey, hey, cuz, am I not scared to what, my nigga? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my nigga <laughs> yeah, man, because uh, bottom line, as you, yeah. As real niggas, you know you always got to have somewhere if right. shit go down. Right. Right. I got to sh- if shit go down spot. But the bell didn't work, though. The bell still don't work. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> no, it don't work. It fucking Wait, don't work. Is this still a real estate project right no, now? No, it, But at the end of the day, I bought, hey, I bought that bitch for 60 grand and mm. I could sell that shit for 200 now. Wow. By the line. But wow. I'm a, I'm, I stay yeah. in it because it's my little sanctuary. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm scared to live in a big ass house. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared. It's too many windows and shit yeah, for yeah. sneaking around just... and ghosts and shit can build up in your house. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can't fuck with no big ass house. Did I just hear a red man talk about ghosts? You said ghosts yeah. can build up. They yeah, can have yeah, a community yeah, in another country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me tell you something. This is legendary. You yeah, just gotta exactly. hear a red man yeah, talk around. about ghosts. God damn, let's make some noise. You can't fuck around with that. Having like eight bathrooms and shit. Hey, he's not talking about no, Ghostface Killer and Ethan, my no, dude. No, not at all. So, uh, so you really do. You really do live in that crib. 
Yes. Well, so if we remake MTV Crip, yeah. if we remake MTV now? Crip, because you that's, know I'm trying to bring. Right you trying to make fun of me, my no, nigga? No, listen, listen. No, my nigga, yeah. No, listen, so if I'm bringing back, because um, I want to bring back MTV Cribs, but I want to bring back it on a Spanish version called La Casa. Uh huh. So we're going to go to, the, like, get Platanos. And then we're gonna, you're gonna be the only black nigga on this episode. I'm gonna go, I can go see you and we can go there. Copy that. Let's do that. Matter of fact, look on my Instagram right now. I'm getting my shit done up right now. Same crib. <laughs> right. Same MTV crib. We Got should that. do revisited. Revisited. They did, uh, they did a revisited. They did, it. They did a part two. Good and man. that shit was funny as hell too because mm. they revisited and I got some things done in there. I was like, yo, I want y'all to see what I got done <laughs> the in here. Flush <laughs> yeah, but then we went to the bathroom and shit mm -hmm. and I forgot because they said, because I said, yeah, and you, and, and they, you know what? They knew because they seen the first version. They said, so is this the same shower curtain? And I was like, no, nah, I wouldn't do an MTV crib way back then. 12, 14 years ago, and then still had, had the same shower curtain, and they went back to the first one, and I still had that same shower curtain. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. They played me out heavy. But it was good, though. It was good. Yeah. yeah. It was a revisit. It was called MTV Cribs Revisit. Oh, man. Oh, man. That is hilarious. All right, now, one of my favorite joints, black and white video. Tonight's the night. Mm. Chills, That's a classic. Yeah. Chills go Forever through my classic. body. Yes, sir. Like, like, again, like I said, like I just like to go have a playlist. Most of the time it's, it's, it's in uh, uh, the audio. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this morning, uh, well, this afternoon, my barber, is, my, is the barber here? No? He's a foul nigga. But the barber, I was like, yo, he, he, he put the whole, you know, when that shit came on, we, we just both, he just stopped cutting my hair. I just stopped getting my hair cut. <laughs> we just looked at the you shit. Had no choice like, it was just like, it paused both of our life. Like, and we were just like, boom. And it, was just, it was just something between us. It's like, all right, cool. It was a five minute break. Let's watch. Who, who produced that record? Uh, Eric Sermon. God damn it. And you knew, did you know it was a classic when you recorded it? Yeah, well, you know, because these was batches of records that I had, and we would just get loops off the record, man. But yeah, the way he put it together and the way I, uh, orchestrated the lyrics, yeah. Mm. It was what we was feeling. Such a crazy record. Like in the 90s, we really didn't give a fuck what the audience was feeling. We made our yeah, own sound. Yeah. That's why all of us stood out and stood different. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, man. And actually on that video, that was, that was, Russell Simmons helped put that video together and put, that was Brett Ratner's first video he ever mm. shot. And after that, he went on and did movies. Rush Ooh, Hour that's the Rush Hour that. nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Actually, his mama was in the video, too. That white lady was in the video. That was Brett Ratner's mama. That's real. Yeah, a lot absolutely. of niggas can't say that. Absolutely. I had well, Brett <laughs> Ratner's yeah, mama Brett in my Martin. video. Was he Brett part of your mama. raps, too? We just, let's just say you yeah. had Brett Ratner's mama twerking. Let's just throw it out there. What? <laughs> let's just throw it out. I don't think twerking was out in the 90s. It, it wasn't she twerking. was working. She was doing the walk. Well, in Miami, yeah. they was doing something like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no y'all was out here booty shaking. What is this shit called out here? That's so what I seen it. You was out here. You live. You from here? Yeah. I mean, I'm L.A. born, but raised in Miami. Okay. Yeah. So, what's your favorite era in hip hop? What, what, what is it? And now this is a ten year span, so you don't have to say, you know, um, <laughs> you don't have to be in the era. Doesn't matter. Favorite era of hip hop? Yeah. It had to be, like our era and the '80s era. I was a big. Mm. Yeah. So what you say? '89 to '99. I would say, well, shit, I would, shit. Well, Run DMC kind of helped late mold 80s me. Late 80s. Well, Run DMC is early 80s, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah, saying you early. can say late 80s to mid 90s. I would say from, yeah, I would say 80s to 90s, to our era to, yeah. So I forever. Well, no, no, <laughs> our, 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 from 80s to our era is, is like yeah. my favorite era of hip hop is where I molded from. Right. You know, I right. can say that definitely. Was, was there ever a point in hip hop where you like, was disappointed. I mean, keep, keep it real. This is drink champs. Well, shit. Come on, you already know. I'm gonna keep it 100 anyway. Right. Um, when when the new music started coming in, I had to get a better understanding of what was going on. Because bottom line is, my nigga, like I can't never shit on hip hop because it still provides jobs for my niggas out here. And you able to come off the street and feed your family. Right. But the 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 fabric 
of it. Or I the wasn't happy. of it. Because I remember the at one point I was looking at your Instagram and you kept like keep '90s alive type shit. You was on some. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, like, I was doing all 90s niggas. Yeah, right, I was right, just representing right. 90s niggas. But what, did that come from a, a form of frustration? No, of not even, now? not even. Because okay. I don't, I'm not frustrated about the new era. Because bottom line is, you know... Me we, neither, but some of these things disappoint me. Some of the things might disappoint you. Or okay. The things that disappoint me is... It's not... The music is going to be music. You have an a, 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 a option to turn that shit off mm-hmm. or keep right. it on, bottom line. Mm-hmm. The thing that kind of disappoint me is the the ethic, the work ethic to get in the game. Mm. It's just so easy. Like, my grandma could record a hot hook right now, and, be on and she'd be the hottest bitch yeah, in cloud. motherfucking yep. America right. with a hot song. You heard grandma with red grandma on right. that shit? She right. was killing that shit, right? Mm. And that shit would be all over, and she'd go get a deal, right. and producers would want to work with her. Right. It's good for... <laughs> it's good that we you have that the opportunity so much in your face, but you know, when you have, when you get something that grand, that kind of, it also comes with a, a con to it. It's always a con to a pro and pro Yeah, it's to good a for grandma, but yeah, it's not yeah. good for the culture. It's not good for the culture. And so it just made it die real diluted right. as far as what kind of material represents a good fabric that we, bun- we done bounced the ball to. Cause you mm. know, we had to pass the ball. And like right. I said, when we got the ball from the eighties niggas, we bounced that shit and we we elevated that shit and we right. we branched it out and we made it more of a a, a a language for other countries and cultures to understand us as a people. Right. And then as we bounce the ball more to the next generation, I think a little bit of that fabric of them thinking what we was trying to do has lost. It turned into just money mm-hmm. and you know, let me just do this record, put it out, get this pub, yeah. Right. But overall, I think it's coming back around. Because motherfuckers, even the new audience, look, nigga, I got five kids, and they all range from 29 to 14, mm. you know, and, and three of them is 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 grown in their 20s. So mm. I get the the rundown, and two of them live in Atlanta. So mm. I get the rundown on new artists, old artists, who new niggas listen to, who the young, and the young art, and most of the young people that I talk to, they be like, nah, 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 that young shit they play on the radio, that's for them little young niggas. We we listen to them. We listen uh-huh. to y'all niggas. We bump uh-huh. 90s shit, yo, and it's uh-huh. a lot. A lot it of young cats that's doing that. It is. So I would I would definitely say our era, man. Uh, mm-hmm. Big up to Al Al. He got a whole station. Yeah, Rock the Bells. Uh, Rock the Bells. Uh, I listen to it all the time. I love it, yeah. Roxanne oh, Dante got a show that. on there. She's killing it. <laughs> Rock the Bells is yeah. killing it, man. Yeah. Sway, Sway is always yeah, killing it. Right, yeah, yeah. Shout yep. out to Sway. He does an intro Shout out to Heather B, man, too, man. Heather B came a long way, Oh, Heather B. Yeah, that's uh, my big up sis right be, there. Yep, yep, that's, that's my. my sis. So, um, she's Jersey, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what's what's the best perks about hip hop? What's the uh, <coughs> best thing that <coughs> hip hop has done for you? Good fucking question. Oh, good look. Help me. Uh, besides, put money on the fucking table, uh-huh. and uh, it 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 allowed me to be that nigga who I am. It helped me, it helped molded me because mm. I knew I wasn't working a nine to fucking five. Right. Mm. And I knew I wasn't gonna be able to take orders from nobody waking up in the morning. Nigga, the, the reason why I rap is because I ain't wanna wake up in the morning. Mm. I'm not a morning nigga. I can't wake up in the morning taking no orders from no motherfucking body, not even my mama. This morning, I woke up in my mama's house. She tried to give me something to do early as soon as I got the fuck up. I'm like, hold up. My shit. <laughs> like, hold up. Let me get into myself first before you start passing me the screwdriver and shit <laughs> to unloose and shit. You know, I need to mold. I need to get into myself. And as creative as I am, I know that I would not be able to get up and take orders from nine to five and be the man I'm supposed to be, even though I did, and I got fired from every job I had. I ain't quit, I got fired, (laughs) you know? So what hip hop done for me is molded me into this person who I am and actually brought out the reality of this Mm. world because Mm. I was able to travel here and there travel to this country, travel to this state, and see how motherfuckers work, see how people work over here and live, see Mm. how people appreciate their culture over here. So it also, you know, opened my eyes to, 
you know, this fucking world, man. You know it, bro. Yeah, such a beautiful thing, Like, yeah, thing, it's man. like, man, shit, such man. The only thing, thing I knew was Nord. Right. And I was afraid, like, look, nigga, either I'm going to be rapping or I'm going to be selling drugs. Because right. I'm not going to no 9 to 5 waking up and shit. Right. You, know? You, you know, when we had, um, we had EPMD on the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I kicked myself after that show because... Uh-huh. One of my favorite collectives and crews in hip hop, hands down, at least is my generation, squad? is his squad. Okay. Obviously, there's the Juice Crew and all these guys. That was well, right his before. squad was first, right? No, 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 no. I'm talking about like Juice Crew. Juice Crew was before first. us. That's not my generation. That's right before okay. me. I'm in high school when his squad and that, uh, okay. and that that's too. That's a drunk nigga. So what yeah. I want to know is, yeah. how did that all come together? What did it mean to you? What was that whole vibe in the hit squad? Because you had. Okay, so, yeah, so we talk about the Hurricane squad, G, and I gotta talk about the breakup because I gotta take a pee pee real quick. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the the hit squad uh, came came like I, I think I was no I wasn't the last member to come in. Um, like Dos Effects was the last member to come in, and when Dos Effects got signed, then I got signed. Then we kind of came up with the hit squad. We're gonna go on. Who the came road. up with it? I don't know. It was either uh, Parish. Thing. I'm not too sure and shit. Like, I think Parrish did it. And uh, we went out on the road. We called ourselves the Hit Squad. And everyone out on the, besides me, I don't think I really had a strong single out or anything, but I was just on the road with so them. So it was before your album? Yeah, it was like kind of before my album right. uh, that we had the Hit Squad. I was just going out. Yo, I was going out doing freestyles and I was murdering shit. Murdering everything on the road. Every time they brought me out, I was murdering shit. And uh, headbangers out already, right? Because that's before you. We we kind of started the hit squad before headbangers. Because that's what solidified it. Yeah, I was on a, I was on I was on uh, the third album when we went out on the road. Right. And then we came up with headbangers. So it was right in that in between the third album, fourth album, where the, like the hit squad kind of built up. And. Uh, and we just took it there, man. We was just rolling. And then when it split up into then it's Death Squad and, and yeah, Parrish well, still it, stayed with Hit Squad, right? No, no, no. Parrish still stayed with Hit Squad. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I said Parrish stayed with it. You said Eric. No, no, Parrish. Parrish stayed with Hit Squad. Yeah. Eric, we oh, went to about Death Squad. Hit Squad and Death Squad? Death Squad. Yeah. How, yeah. how awkward was that for you? It wasn't awkward. It was just a business move. Because you knew you came in with, with E? And yeah, and I, like, that's right. I'm going to leave with E. All right. You know, and uh, it wasn't nothing, man. It was just like... All right, these two guys, the bosses, you know, they uh, they not getting along, so they got to go their ways and learn. You know, no big fucking deal. Now it was an awkward moment, right? At one point where uh, Tupac comes home from jail, he's wilding on everybody, <laughs> he's telling everybody "fuck you" from New York, and then this record comes out of nowhere. We hear the story that you did, guys did it for Daz later, but for a week. In New York history, people was like, what the fuck is going on for Red Meth? Did you never, did you never not fail that? And Dog Pound's on that record too, right? Yeah, yeah because- Get the I, fuck I, out of here, no. no. for a week, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna yeah? Be, I'm gonna be honest with I people. never knew that. People were kind of skeptical. Okay, look, look at that. That's, that's Tupac here, saying bro. it's real. No <laughs> way, yo. That's, that's Tupac saying it's I never knew that, yeah, yo. Yeah, because like, it's like, I was like, it, it might have been two or three days, you know, because back then we didn't have a Twitter where right. you could have said, yo, we did that for Daz. Like, you know, you got to remember, even when you did a Source article, you did that shit two months in advance. That's right. You did an XXL or Vibe or some shit. That's, you did it in October for December's issue. That's right. So I'm just saying, like, there was a, 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 like at least a two to three day period, maybe even a week, where people was like, is Red and Mephidim riding with the West Side? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> just being honest. Like, I'm sure you, you never heard that? I'm high as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but you lie. never heard like No, I ain't never hear that shit, <laughs> man. You crazy as hell. No, you <laughs> not, nigga. I never heard nah, that, listen. yo. I'm gonna be honest. Word, that's and crazy, yo. Because you gotta that. remember, like, this came out like, right after Who Shot Y'all, something like that. It came out right in the period of where it was like, even if you love Pac, you had to kind of like take the choice, that stance. And then this record came out, I got my mind made up. 
And it was like, whoa. I'm saying, Get out of you here, know what man. happened was, you guys, you all, all, all met, I forget which we, one of y'all, came and said, yo, we did that for Daz. And it yeah, cleared it up. We both, yeah, we both cleared it up. You both cleared yeah. it up. But for, I'm saying, for that weekly time, like I said, we didn't have a- Get the fuck out of here. That's so new yeah, to so me. So people were like, yeah, I kid you not. Get out of here, man. I never really heard that, bro. But so you didn't hear, you, you didn't no, feel- I, I, I ain't feel nothing, no. Oh, because wow. we knew we was doing it for Daz, yo. Right. Like, we didn't feel nothing because we knew we was going, even if we was going in for pop, right. like we really didn't, we wasn't tripping that much, you know what I'm talking about? But we went to do it for dad, so we ain't have no feelings at all. We was just mm. like, yo, we just going to lace this shit. And even Deck was in there. They cut Deck off. They cut yeah, Deck I heard his first Deck was on there. Yep. Yeah, but uh, mm. yeah, we ain't know that shit was going on Pac album, mm. you know? So you had no warning. It was just, it just. No, dropped. no, it wasn't. No, but we heard the story how it happened and shit. Cause we, because you know, Pops like in the movie, was, yeah, yeah. yeah well, as soon as he came home, he was taking everything. Now that I watched the movies, I was like, all right, yeah, okay. And that missed the time while he was doing that album, how that song made it. He came home and he he said they were, he was just taking everything. Like I need that. You got to meet Pac. Absolutely. A word? Describe that. I, I've never got to meet Pac. And what era yeah, I could, of Pac yeah, did I got, you Yeah, meet? I've seen Pac a couple of times. I took pictures with Pac and shit, man. Wow. Pac was, uh, he was cool, cool as fuck. Right. Bottom line. Right. You know, when you see, it's certain motherfuckers like, you know, you carry an aura about yourself to when motherfuckers meet you, whenever, whatever they're doing in the world, they come down to a, Yo, what's good, my nigga? How you right. to a certain level of respect? Cause you know that that person know you love hip hop just as much as they do. Mm. So it was always a mutual good, you know, mm. understanding with us every time we seen each other. Never no, no red line or anything, my nigga. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Now yeah, it's got to be. Now, so I'm, I'm surprised you never heard that though. For real, no, I ain't never hear that shit. Yeah, though. for I think real, you for still real. Made that shit up. For real, no, 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 I'm kidding yeah, no, you now. Look, it was a, it was three days of people like. You know, cause you, and, and you know who else was um, uh, uh, accused of that was uh, Buckshot Shorty and them because oh that I'm, was really close. I'm to gonna Pac. tell you why because not only that they was close to Pac but because remember Buckshot and them had beef with Big. Yeah. So them on a record with, with with Pac at the time seemed like they were uh, aligning themselves. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So then you and Meth, everybody was like. Where the fuck okay, are these now, niggas coming now, from? Now you saying that, okay, man. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying because, but no one else at that time were, were, were working with them because of Pac's harsh words, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, so, I'm saying, people were kind of mad at y'all for a little while until it was the interview. I forget what interview it was, but y'all was like, yo, we did it for Daz and Corrupt. And everybody was like, oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? It, it and that was shit wiped right up like it was yeah, bad. It But see, That's you know, because, you know, now, now I can put you on a record with Amy Schrimmer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and you, you you could address the rumor immediately. Yo, listen, listen, yo, look, I did the record for Nori. That's right. Nori put Amy Schrimmer on. That's right. I don't care. I don't got no beef with Amy Schrimmer. Yeah. But is it Amy Schrimmer? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just you, <laughs> you said her last name like eight different ways. <laughs> He was like Schwimmer, Schumer, Simmer, Bloomer. But, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So back then, you, you you couldn't address a rumor. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's why right now, if you don't address a rumor, immediately you seem guilty. Because you have every outlet to do it. Yes, you do. You know what I'm saying? Remember back in the days, you could ignore this shit. You'd be like, yo, nigga said I got such and such. What? 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 You can ignore it. It goes away. That's right. Now if you ignore it, they're like, that motherfucker guilty. That's right. Look at look, look at R. Kelly. I'm sorry to bring him up again. Yeah. What? He's been ignoring <laughs> shit for, for a long time, and look at what's been going on. He gotta go to jail. Yeah. You know that's some I, that's some. I've never wished jail on anybody yeah, exactly. in my that's life, some, but this is change. Hey, at the end of the day, that's something for him and the higher power to deal <laughs> with, man. And yeah. He, he gonna deal. He gonna pay the price. Whatever him and the higher power done told him. You know what you gotta do. He gotta deal with it. I leave my nose about before? this, huh? You working to them before? Did I? No. I got one. No. Record, well. Oh, you do? You got a record? Yeah. One? My only record with Jay Z is with R. Kelly. <laughs> Me, Jay Z, and Cameron. It's called We Ride. Come on, Google it. it has nine million. So I got the plaque. That's right. That's right. I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> oh, Man, come on. you celebrated that record right I now. I didn't feel good at all as I did that. He was like, yeah, I did that. That's right. I did that, my nigga. <laughs> I did that. Oh, hey, you God. Want to go <laughs> no blow horns, none of that. No day. None of that, none of that, none of that. I actually, the funny shit is, um, I, I don't know if, uh, but when I went to the studio, I had actually synced a bed in the studio and I didn't get along. 
Whoa, 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 listen, don't open the can of worms on your own shit, yeah, nigga. Yeah, 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 what man. eyes wide shut shit no. is this? All right, listen. All right, have you, I don't know if you guys ever know, uh, like, if there's a studio called Bearsville. With beds, little beds? No, Bearsville in each... <laughs> I like, I like that. You, you go. I like that. So, <laughs> you, you know, I, like, I can take a joke. But uh, in Bearsville, it's upstate New York, Woodstock. This is where we did the Firm album, where we did uh, NRE album. So track masters used to rent this. So each studio had their own, had their own like house to it. Right. So you would rent Studio A. Studio A upstairs. That's where the engineer would sleep. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you could you stay in the studio the whole time. So when I I had just came from that, mind you, this is. Trackmasters, Trackmasters was working with R. Kelly. Um, so when I looked in, in his studio to, 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 to lay my verse, I didn't, by the way, but when I laid my verse, when I seen a bedroom, I see nothing wrong with it. Like, not because I didn't know what was going on, but because I had just seen Woodstock, you know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, you can actually sleep in a studio, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, you don't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to process this. A bad is right, sleeping. Let me describe it, let me describe it. This is Studio next A. To, next to the no, mic. No, 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 no. This, this is, is Woodstock. This is not, this is Woodstock. This is Woodstock. He look, got look. bunk beds next to the mic? <laughs> Hear me out. This is, this is Woodstock, it's called Bearsville. So Studio A is here, right? Studio B is here. Studio C is here. They all individually houses. One it, of them is Hoodstock. No, this is all in Woodstock. Oh, Woodstock. Woodstock. It's all in Woodstock. Right, okay, it's okay. called Bearsville. So Studio A, I can walk in Studio A. It'll be Nas in there, Jungle in there, but they got a three bedroom upstairs. Right. Like an you understand like, the yeah, whole okay, thing. Okay, okay. So you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The Studio B would be the same thing. It'd be Nature, 50 Cent, and such and such. And then Studio C would be Nori and my, my crew. You know what I'm saying? Right. So after seeing that, I was like, oh, okay. Like Circle House. Right, right. Circle House the is the crib. same exact thing. Like yeah. Circle House. And so when I seen our shit, I didn't, I didn't become alarmed. Because I was like, oh, okay, certain niggas just record. Let the engineer but sleep, see wake them up. No, I didn't see that not even a, a okay, person. A person. Okay. It was just weird. They wanted me to lay the verse by myself. And I was just like, ah, I just broke out. Yeah, because I'm trying to see where you was going with this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Band. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying <laughs> the same exact the same exact shit that they were showing on uh -huh. the shit, where they said that where the beds was, uh -huh. I actually went there. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, I went there. Oh, I, in I the documentary? Them. Yeah, in the docu oh, documentary. series. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you ain't see that? You saw that? I, see, I ain't see what you was talking about. You ain't see the studio? <laughs> no, the studio, remember the studio? They said the studio where the, the, the lady threw the rocks and was trying to get oh, her yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. they said in the studio, they had beds in there. Like beds, like, like instead of a lounge. Right. A, that oh, lounge would, would be a bed. You know what I'm saying? And there would be people there. And you went in there? I saw an actual bed, but I didn't see Did you that. you go in there? I ain't, I ain't going no bedroom. I ain't need to go in no bedroom. I had eight niggas with me from Left Rack City. It's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> we a little different. It's all the way terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's all the way terrible, by the way. Okay. But yeah, um, I don't know how we got here. How did we get here? Yeah, no, you, you went to a dark place, place, bro. Yeah, 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 man. Man. I, I told weird, you bro. to leave it alone earlier. <laughs> and you just kept going yeah. and kept going. And I no, said, no, stop. Actually, did you you went into a rabbit hole, yeah, bro. Yeah, I work with our Kelly. Nah, you know what's no, the crazy shit? Bottom line is, like, R. Kelly in like in the '90s, whatever he was doing personally ain't my business. But I know when I was a part of his video, when he invited a whole gang of niggas, I think he was there. Okay, you, I, think, I was not there, man. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking. He invited a gang of rappers, and it was outside of. Some, matter of fact, it might. It might it? No, it was an R. Kelly video. And it was gang of niggas NRA. outside. I, I don't forget. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't know what song it was. We gotta but, Google this shit, ass. But bottom line is, like, he showed motherfuckers love. Like, he definitely showed niggas love when he was out. Like, Keith Murray did a song with him and shit. I'm sure he showed Keith Murray. Murray did a song with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure oh, he my. showed Murray love. That video was hot. But he right. do personal. Hey, man, he gonna, you know, got to deal with it. Yeah, it's fucked up. I never thought Michael Jackson did it. Man, what a segue, bro. <laughs> Jesus, Chris, I mean, you're going I, down I, the list, I, bro? I, what, what, what are you saying? You think he did do it? I don't think Michael Jackson did I don't think he, I don't like nobody talking about Mike. I don't, I don't think Michael Jackson like, did it. Like, you can't talk about really like Mike around yeah, me. That's so. what I'm saying. That's you can't what, talk about Whitney I'm, around me, neither. You no, can't no. fuck around and talk about Whitney around me. No, I feel me. that, too. No, no, no. I feel you that, know, too. But Mike, you know, I don't know. I don't you think know, Mike did it. I just feel like... You know, as you know what, as we done grew older and started understanding the government and how just that whole operation of the world works, right. 
Now I know he didn't do it. Right. Now it's the way the way these popular people are dying and getting right. caught up in shit. Mm -hmm. My 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 percentage on if he was set up right. is more higher than him just. Yeah, he was set up. Like of course. Him. Yeah. You know. Definitely. Or just media, the way media manipulates and. This this might this might fuck you shit. up though. I also think OJ ain't do it. Oh my god. I think. You think Did this OJ fuck up that? my credibility just now? I don't know. Look, 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 nigga. I, say, I, laugh. I don't think OJ did it, right, man? Uh, ask Jerobi. <laughs> Jerobi? Jerobi did it? Don't no, no, ask no, Jerobi, you think OJ did it? Yo, Jerobi. I don't know. No, no, Your blackness don't. will not allow you to answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't think OJ. I don't think OJ. I don't <laughs> I don't think OJ did it. Listen, I hung out with a lot of killers. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the story, though, at the backstage what, at the concert. Which one? I got two. I got one. The one that concert, I was in the picture. Then I got one in the sports in. grill. No, the one he said. The one in the sports grill. Unit. Yeah, I just oh, said he was murder unit. OJ? No, I, I grabbed the OJ. I said, you murder unit. He, he, said, he said, yes, yeah. I am. He said, no. He but said, he, yeah. he thought, you know, it's a rap gang. No, no. I was there. It was a little weird. It was a little weird. You said, oh, you murder gang, huh? Murder unit. And he murder was like, unit. yeah. He said, yeah. Hey, but we did have murder <laughs> unit, man. <laughs> Yeah, he's going a little too hard. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I mean, he might have just been yes. with it, but he said, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, OJ. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, OJ, yes. No, nah, so look, I hung out with OJ at a bar called Sports Grill in Kendall one day. Yeah, he lived in Kendall. And I looked at him, because I know every killer in the world. They got a certain... Jenna say quoi about the I domain. That's right. There's something about them then. And OJ didn't have it. I looked for him every which way, shape, form, or fashion. And I tried to ask him questions each way. OJ ain't do it, man. He ain't do it, man. Now, he might not know somebody who did it. But him himself, he ain't do the shit, man. Let's make some noise for OJ. The niggas is careful who clapping. Niggas like, ooh. So wait, on, man. you said you cross-examined OJ? And he yeah, did I did. I ain't gonna lie. I did. All right, but Red, I was like, you was a part of, <laughs> you was a part of hip hop's first historical tour. Like to me, in my like, uh, we got Run DMC. We got we got uh, Fresh Fest. We got all that, but this is the one for you know breaking into that new era. These are the new kings of hip hop. And it would have to be you, Red, DMX, Ja Rule, and the homie Hove. Like, mm -hmm. how was that? Because I heard y'all niggas was flying through there, peeing on people like R. Kelly. Oh, man, here you go, man. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Just, Kelly, I don't man. know. I don't know why she's on my mind. I'm so sorry. Oh, but um, y'all was flying through, though, definitely. Um, it was killing what shit. What the fuck? The Hard Knock Life Tour. Yep. Hard Knock Life Tour. Um... Yeah, you fucking right. The most historical tour that most ever historical. And First off, by the way, hold on before you answer that question, because they were it was so much bad press when y'all announced it to ask if this tour would never last. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think it was gonna last. And y'all, what was it? Sixty days? Three months? Yeah. On the motherfucking road, every On day the sold motherfucking out. Motherfucking road. Every day sold out. <laughs> Hip hop. <laughs> so this, because this is a long pause. This is a long question. So, who approaches you, and what do they say? They say, "Hard knock life, nigga. Let's go." Yes. That's it. <laughs> For yeah. real. But you know what? It was uh, 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 Jay and them coming in the Def Jam, mm. and. and uh, you know, they, I mean, they got the building hot. I mean, we had the building hot uh, already with the yeah. artists that was bumping up there with us and, you know, everybody else. But when they came in the building, it was like a growth. Mm. And because they had their own entity. You know what I'm saying? They had entity. Def Jam. Yeah. Okay. Entity. Okay. What did no, I, entity? I thought you said enemy. I was like, what? No, no, I said okay. entity. Man. Okay, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> Y'all going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so they had their own, they, uh, their own brand, I would say, and they collabed with Def Jam. Uh -huh. And... When they decided to do the fucking tour, it was just like, we was that ingredient that they needed. And we was like, fuck yeah, right. for 60 days. Yeah. 
60 days straight. Fat ass Mark, you, you was on, right. you was on it, you know. And Mint, and, and Mint Bleak was on there too? Yo, everybody was on that shit, man. Oh, Beanie Siegel. Beanie did, did Siegel. Do? Those were back to back dates? Back to, no, not back to back. Some, oh. some of them were like okay. four, like we'll right. work like four or five days out the week, then drive okay. two days, had to rest for the bus driver and all that shit. But it was literally like 10 buses out that bitch, man, damn near. This is when Dame Dash called Kevin Lyles a quarter water. Yeah, on that, uh, on that uh, backstage, DVD, joint? backstage joint. Kevin Lyles is my brother, but that was hilarious. Yeah, Do you not agree, man? Yeah, <laughs> big up to Kevin Lyles. Lyles, man. But uh, yeah, but how, fun out there. how? So they come to you and they just say, "Yo, you guys want to do it?" And you just automatically just yeah, I'm we in. just jump on. And just, and then so you know this is a story to talk from the first night, or when do you when do you realize it? I noticed it after the fucking first night because we uh just walking on people's hands yeah man it was like yo it was like the first night all of us it was like game time it was like all right you got like you got like six seven major niggas on the tour and it's like all right the first night we like all right who who gonna blow the building down and shit mm -hmm. and usually man i ain't gonna fucking lie man when we red mf came out and shit, niggas was still sweeping the floors but and shit. But I heard Ja Rule went on before you. Yeah, yeah, the niggas ja was putting up cups and shit and sweeping yeah. and putting up chairs and shit. Right. And the building didn't get packed until the half of Red and Meth show every mm. night. Mm. Like it was, and Ja Rule and them came out with, with, uh, with uh, Jay and them. I thought he I thought came he out came first out. and then came back out. That's, that's what, what I heard. Yeah, that's what he's saying. I, I, did he? Yeah, I because think he came I, out before you and then came back out. Yeah, I mean, I if he I'm, came I'm, out before us, I mean, he had to definitely be getting the, the crowd was the people that worked there in oh. the building because <laughs> when we came out, literally sometimes they'd be setting up seats and shit and it'd be oh. a small crowd in the front, but it'd be kind of packed in the back and shit. And then half our show, it'd, it'd uh, get packed in, in, in the front. But the first day, what I knew it was going to be a historical tour was the first day because we all went out there to show our balls. We was like, uh -huh. fuck that. We coming on early. We blowing this shit down. Uh -huh. And then we came out there. We did our thing. We swung on the ropes and shit, kicked niggas in the head. And then we stayed <laughs> and watched Jay and them show and DMX and them show. And we was like, oh, man. And they stayed and watched our show. And yeah. I mean, they came in a couple of times early and watched our show, and they was like, these niggas is flying. And yeah. then we seen as they started adding more shit because niggas ain't know we was flying. They had to come to Lady our Gaga show. Lady Gaga technically they, bit y'all shit. Yeah, she did? Yeah. <laughs> fucking Gaga, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gaga shit. But hey, I'll tell you what, we, we decided to fly when we knew how early we had to come on and shit. Mm. You know, we had to come on early, so. Uh. We, we was like, fuck it, we had to make an impact. Right. And we are motherfucking bad! bad. So, so you, you know what we gotta do, we got, we got new guests, we gonna let them introduce themselves to the people. Come on, talk to the people, Mr. Motherfucking it. Crane, go ahead. Hey, Yo. stop blowing that goddamn <laughs> <laughs> I need to do a show tonight, man. You gonna, I ain't gonna be in here the goddamn oh, We going to your show, we coming to support. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Cream in the building. Yes, yes, Mr. Cream, Brick City, Geller House, Cruddyville. You know how we do, man. Mm. That was hard. The legendary <laughs> DJ Dice oh. Brooklyn. Woo -woo. The original DJ from Dos Effects. Oh. Oh. I'll do it this way. So this is a Drink Champs <laughs> edition. <laughs> went this way now. This is a Drink Champs edition. We used to drink this in Branson. This is for, oh, here you uh, go. rest in peace to Eddie. So we're going to have yes, one This is vegan, shot. right, man? This is vegan, yeah, yeah, definitely is. This what is the fuck herbs. Is that? This is Tiger, Tiger Bone. Bone. Oh, no, no, my nigga. Tiger <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiger yeah, Bone, yeah, come I'll be on. All over the place we got to stock y'all. Oh, man. Salud. This is oh, one shot, man. Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Oh, even man. 50 Cent, he don't even drink. Even said, 50 Cent took one. Oh, it's not liquor. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. One. It's, it's kind of yeah. liquor, not really. It's like herbs. It's a tradition. Come on. It's like It's an ancient Chinese secret. Asian Chinese secret, just one, just That's one. That's the first thing right, they tell right, you, right. they throw a uh, yeah, get in. You, should I do it for my boy? Am I doing it for you because yeah, yeah, you're my boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and Eddie. And Eddie, yeah. rest in peace. Yeah. 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 You are now alive. That's terrible. You that was more? the most horriblest shit. I swear. <laughs>
Explain not, it to the but people. But it's not strong liquor, though. Right? Shit. That's, that, is, uh, that is strong liquor. No, it's not liquor, though. Oh. It's herbs. But I think oh. we fucked this batch up, because I've had that shit in my crib, in my and Even Red took more than you? Come on. Come well, on. Got, I got to be behind those turntables. Okay, so. okay, okay, okay. Uh-uh, 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 nigga, uh-uh. You going to drink that motherfucker. Yeah, that's not going to drink it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, See, how, he said because of Eddie, I had to do it. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, because Eddie used to give me that. Do it, now, now, how crazy it is it uh, DJing for, for Red? Because I know he he got to be like a spontaneous type of guy, I, yeah, or is he the, is he a structured type of guy? Oh, oh man. Well, for those that don't know, mm-hmm. me and Red been friends since 92, his squad days. Mm. So, that chemistry was always there. Right. And um, when I left Dice Effects, mm. In 99, the twins, microphone check off. Um, yeah, they the branched twins. off, yeah. they did their thing, and it was so happy that Red, like, where, where that little black fuck I had dice at? So he found me, and I've been with him ever since. Like, year 2001, when the Twin Towers went down. But working with him is incredible. Mm. He keeps you on your toes. Mm. He's that type of person, like, you fuck up, he's gonna let you know. Mm. I think I must, and I keep it to the world because I'm from Brooklyn. I'm, right. I must have got fired about a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, but he does that for a reason. Mm. And you know, but oh, Reddit, wow. he's amazing. He's on the tables. He's, he's, a, nice he's, the a, table. he's amazing. That's why I show him the way it is. Woo! Let's make some noise play. for that. God damn it. Man, up, man. So you the same question, you my make brother. Some noise for that lip you fucking just gave me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How is how is it being around the god? It's beautiful, man. It's because I love being around him, man. Right. Been around him since I was a little kid. Oh, uh-huh. You said you was in the MTV crib in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was you on the floor? <laughs> yeah. What kind of jacket did you have on? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it wasn't a jacket. It, I just had a, like, it was like a, a blue, a grayish shirt or something. I thought that was a blanket. I thought that was a blanket. But my arm was out. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me all these years. <laughs> Y'all got me. Uh, so. Yeah, it's fun, though. So now I'm growing up in Brick City and seeing uh, all the things that you have seen. You have, you ever thought that he would make it this far? Well, that's, a, that's a good question. All the things that I've seen. Right. It's like, yeah, I always knew he'd make it this far. Oh, wow. he, he always been talented. <laughs> because since I came up the hill, you remember that time I came up the hill and you was back there and um, you was DJing in the backyard and doing it was out there rapping. And I came up and I spent my little verse and shit, but you know, you really weren't paying me no attention, but I seen you and you was doing your shit. And I was like, yo, but I always looked up and was like, yo, I know Cuz gonna be, you know, he's gonna be the big shit though. Because he used to always come to my goddamn house Mm. trying to get on the road. And I used to always turn him around and not tell him, no, Mm. I don't want you out here with me. And he forced his way on to me because he was my younger cousin, Mm. but he, he forced his way on Mm. And now I know. As mm. <laughs> soon as I rung the bell, it was a cab already waiting for me. Like, uh-huh. he already knew I was coming and was sending me home. <laughs> uh-huh. No. But now. And this motherfucker here, you know, mm. since we got history from the Hit Squad days, mm. you know, I fire his motherfucking ass every motherfucking show. <laughs> every chance I get, I try to fire him. And just for some reason, you yeah. know, we just stay connected because we're right. family. But right. <clears throat> in, in all sense, they know that expectancy on the stage to compete. Because you know, Nori, right. we came right. from an era where we got to compete. Right. Bottom line. You had is, to have a good show and good records. Exactly. You had yeah. to have both of them. And if you ain't have. The hit records, you had to have a good fucking show. All right. And that's just what we about, right. you know, bottom line. Mm-hmm. That shit got me talking slow as a oh, that's, that's It's so beautiful, yeah. Red Man. You don't understand. You don't understand, yo, man. man. Let me just say something. Is, yo, that shit is crazy, yo, how liquor just goes to my feet because I don't drink. <laughs> yo, this shit just went right to my fucking toes. <laughs> that's yo. a cool Tiger bone goes mm-hmm. to your feet. Yo, that's it just long. went right to my feet, yo. Well, like, let me tell you something, Red. 
There's so many places, there's so many artists that after you get 10 years in this game, these people want to call you what they want, what they call quote unquote washed up. They want to say that it's, it's over for you. And the thing about it is I want to change that perspective. I want people to know that the longevity you get in this game, just like rock and roll or jazz or whatever, we want to celebrate you. We want to yeah. tell motherfuckers, you know what? You're, you're the OG, but because a lot of times people call you OG, but they don't really mean it. They're just calling you OG because that's just something that they want to say. Or it could even be derogatory sometimes. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I want to change that perspective. I want to say that the longer you've been in this game, the longer season you've been in the game, we want to salute you. We want to big you up. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to kicking these people out the game and doing that. That's what Dream Champs is for. We're a platform for people who have been in this game for 10 years and more. And you know what? As opposed to 10 years and more, but we're telling you, we fuck with you. Exactly. We fuck with you. You seasoned. Like when Sammy Davis got 10 years, they fucking loved him for that. You know, why the fuck in our game, you get 10 years, you get 12 years, you get 15 years. People say, well, it's over for him and there's a new version of him. Why the fuck they got to be that? Why they got to be that? Uh, to me, uh, 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 Nas is in a new version of Rock Kim. He's his version of Rock Kim. Not another version. You understand? Yeah. So let's just motherfucker make some noise for that. Yo, right now, thank you for coming to the you want to you want to say, say to the people? Well, listen. You can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Cream nine five eight eight. You know what I mean? I got a single out called uh, Congo. Okay. It's on um, every digital right. platform right now. You yes, know, sir. it's crazy. Please pick it up. Mm. 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 <laughs> For those, I don't know if a lot of people knew that Red Man had DJ for DOS effects back then too. Oh, I did Before wow. they got signed. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. It's, it's documented it's on YouTube. I'm they originally they we all went to Virginia State, but then I left. Came he back took home. your job as you left. Huh? <laughs> Red Man took your job as you no, left. No, 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 no. Because at that time Red Man was know. in the process doing his music and getting on. Right. So oh, before, nice. before we Dos Effects got signed or mm. picked, discovered, we was in Virginia State. Mm. So when they finally did get signed, I already had left Virginia State, came back to New York and DJ for Tim Dog. Right. So in that, that period, he already had got his deal mm. and Dos. And he started DJing for Dos. And then when the hit squad came, they found me, another blessing. Dice, yo, Pete Parrish wants you. They want to audition DJs. I'm gonna be you honest. You're original, so through this and whole that's how interview, came about. you know what I yeah. realized, Red Man, you lived all over the place. Yeah. You, you like the nigga that um from Castaway. You like the ball. <laughs> 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 you, you like Wilson. You everywhere. Yeah, nigga, I you lived. Did. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I did. He he did, did a lot I of work. Lived a lot of fucking places. <laughs> And he I did like all the lie. elements. Let me find out you was in Rock Steady Crew too. I probably was. <laughs> you got all the elements in him. You are the true version. Let me just tell you, Brad. You are the true version of an MC. You are the true version of a good person. Every time I ever seen you, you always. Let me tell you, I, I, before we get up out of here. You, you made me drink that tiger bone and we about to get the fuck up on it. <laughs> 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 Come on, bro. I could have saved that damn man. Let me tell you something. Yo, you wild guy. Everywhere we ever been, you always gave me advice. It's only one time that you didn't um, give me advice. I think we were on tour and you, I went on your tour bus and you was like, you ain't played this game. I forget what game it was. And I came on a tour bus suspecting like him to like teach me or something. <laughs> We got on the game. <laughs> I passed the blade. He just kept whipping my ass. I forget what it was. And I kept going like this. He's like, yeah, yeah. That nigga wouldn't even smoke with me. <laughs> he, just, he just kicked my ass. And I said, damn, there's certain things your OG is not going to teach you. And he, he, he would not. But yo, you're a great person. Hip hop has to continue to salute people like you. We gotta continue to salute our own, mm -hmm. salute our own kind. Because if Absolutely. we expect anybody else to salute us, then we're fucking idiots from the beginning. The thing about us, we need to have a hip hop union. Per people who've been in involved with us from the beginning, uh, meaning you know the 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 enlightenment to, to hip hop and, and and what it brings to the culture. And this gotta keep being elevated. That's right. And the thing about it is this. If we don't big up our own people, there's no one to be there. When I say our own people, I'm talking about hip-hop. I ain't talking race. I ain't talking culture. I'm talking hip-hop. 
hip hop. So that can be that can be you know Kid Frost. It can be MC Search. I don't feel like if you guys you know us put in these 10, 15 years of work and something happened to your family, I feel like hip-hop should come in and be responsible. Exactly. It's like any it's other like corporation. Any other job. We always yeah. said that. Well, KRS tried to do that back in the day, man. That's what he wanted to do, man. Right. We actually wanted to put something together where we can actually eat and well, actually have dental benefits. We yeah. are a fucking union. We are like a yeah. union. We are a job. We do serve the, per serve the public. So why shouldn't we get dental benefits from our label? Because you know and, why and, back then we didn't have Will Smiths and we didn't have Jay Z's, and but now we do where where we can help you know structure where because you know for lesser people you know what I'm saying when I say lesser people that was the, the worst word ever but for people who didn't have as much success as others yeah. you understand know what I'm saying because I don't feel like I feel like if we both put in the same 20 years of hip hop and you you know dedicated your life and I might have been a little bit more successful successful doesn't mean that I I'm more important that's right. I feel like we should all be important. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like it's just like it's just like you know the, the brothers you got with you. He might be the hype man. He might be the DJ or or whatever. But you put in the same 20 years, and if one of them gets sick, I feel like we should take care of them the same way we would take care of you if you was to get sick That's in right. hip hop. And I feel like that we should do that because there's so many other corporations from even like fucking. You know, construction, you can get something hit on your head and they'll fucking take care of you. And hip hop, somebody hit you in the head of a bottle, you gotta deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or sue the club. Yeah, or sue the and, and, and that shit ain't right. So, you know, again, man, I wanna thank you, brother. Wait, 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 I wanna say one yeah. thing real quick on Please. behalf of Miami as well. Yes. Growing up here, Miami hip hop kid in the early 90s, you know, we was trying to rep, just like how Jersey was battling the New York thing, imagine in the South. Mm -hmm. You know, New York was late to the South. But you're one of the few cats that came to the South, came to Miami, work with Miami artists. Mm -hmm. Mother Superior, I had her at the show last yes, time we did the show on Blackbird. Yes, fuck I just sir. want to say good looking out. Thank you for that. Hell you know, yeah. we appreciate you here. Yeah, you owe me some beats for that goddamn <laughs> song I did. That I shit do, was I do, I do. Yo, but what's funny is, man, like I watched that uh, hip hop documentary on Netflix, man, and understood mm -hmm. y'all Miami rap, man, how it started, man. That's, mm. That shit was crazy as hell, man. Y'all started straight from bass music. Bass music. Y'all, 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 y'all. Uh, Sugar Hill Gang was, was, too live yep. and them niggas. Too, too live. live. I mean, yeah. there's a yeah, a lot of history I mean, in Miami's hip hop. Yeah, thing. yeah, man. Like you know, I learned a lot from that shit, man. Well, Red Man, we want you to know just in case anybody ain't never tell you. Over here at Drink Chance, we love you. We love what you did to the culture. We I'm glad I finally got the chance to do this, bitch. Hey, man, listen, you were... Yo, I ain't gonna lie, yo. Yo, shout out to Mr. Green for helping to put this together. Yo, listen, not, yo, look. Shout out to Cuz for put, put, uh, putting it together, but I'm gonna tell you something like this. Soon as this show started, my brother called me about it. <laughs> yeah, and right. I ain't gonna lie, man. Like he, I was one of the first, and you know, me and Nori talked through the phone. We yes, ain't no, yeah. no industry friends. Yeah, right. We yep. talked through the phone. Yep. And when he started the show, he, he wanted me on it. Yep. And like, I'm just glad I got to do this for my nigga. Yep. Because I know, like, you know, out of all people, you yep. know, he had on the show, he wanted yep. his real brothers on yep. it. Thank and you. I appreciate Thank that, my nigga. No, I like, appreciate I, I you, gotta brother. let them know, like, he yeah. was on me. Yeah. Like, appreciate directly, you. no right. management. Yeah. He was on me. Like, my I nigga did management too, but I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was on me. He was on me, my nigga, from day one with this shit. And I'm glad to be a part of this bitch. And I took a drink for my nigga. Just for this, my nigga. Yes, sir. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it at this, because you know why? It's about time hip hop start controlling hip hop. We can't keep complaining and saying, you know, we can do this and do this, but we're not putting our own people in position to control it. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like it's like it's like uh, what's my man name for uh, the, the the book uh, the mayor from um, Newark? Cory Booker. Yeah, Cory Booker. We can't keep complaining about things that's happening in Newark unless we motherfucking get behind exactly. a person like that. So it's the same thing with this culture. Like I believe that everything from our culture should come from our culture. That's right. If you watch sports, it should come from Jada Kiss. Mm -hmm. If you watch the news, it should come from Jim Jones. If you watch motherfucking, you know, a podcast, it should come from Drink Champs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.